On today's episode, I'll refinish this old radio. This is an old Philco radio from the 1930s, probably 1937 to be exact. The model number is 37-610. The finish on the top is in really rough shape and will need to be stripped off and completely refinished. The finish on the front isn't too bad, and I might be able to save that. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. I've tinkered with old radios on and off over the years, but this is the first one I've had in a long time with a wood cabinet that needed refinishing. And it looks like there's some nice walnut veneer under that old finish. So I'm hoping this one will look pretty sharp once I'm done with it. I think the best place to start is to remove the chassis inside and first I have to take off the knobs. This one's being a little difficult. This has got shortwave on it, so you can tune into places like Budapest or London, Japan, Java, Warsaw. <clears throat> Pretty cool. So now that the chassis is out, I can start refinishing the top and the sides. I know that I want to completely remove this old finish on this area and put a new finish on but I'm not so sure about the front yet. I might want to try and save that original finish. So I'm just going to start with this spot and see how it goes. Okay, so I've got all the finish removed from the top and the sides. And now if I wet this down so we can see what the wood looks like, you can see that there was a really nice color hiding underneath that old finish. So now, now that I see what this looks like, uh, I think I am going to have to strip the front too. Because you kind of see the difference in the color. And I don't think I'd ever get the front to look like this without taking the finish off. And it's in really bad shape anyway, so I might as well just do that. And hopefully I can save the, the Philco logo on it. I'm gonna try. If not, then I'm sure I can find a reproduction somewhere. And then I'm also wondering about these black lines that are on it. Not sure if those are a uh, an inlay or a painted on or a decal. So I'm gonna to try to save those two. Let's see how it goes. Well, I can already see that I'm not gonna be able to save this logo. So I'm gonna take some measurements so that when I get the new logo, I'll get the placement correct. And then while I'm here, I might as well try this stripe here. Okay, so that looks like uh, it might be an inlay. It's not going anywhere, so that's good news.
So here we can see the difference in color between the raw wood after the finish is removed and the wood with the finish still on it. <clears throat> that old yellowed lacquer finish really changes the color. I much prefer this color without the old finish. Well, I went looking around in my box of old radio parts and I found that I already have a new label for this. This label is pretty much spot on. Might be just a hair larger, but it'll work fine. So I can get rid of this. I got all the measurements, so I know where to place the new one. So there's a little bit of a ring on the top of the radio here. And to try and get rid of that, I'm going to apply some oxalic acid. I let the oxalic acid sit on the radio overnight. So now let's see if it had any effect on the ring. I think it did actually. It's um, harder to see now, although there's a little bit of it left there, maybe a little bit there and there, but that's a lot better and it's good enough for me. So now I want to sand the whole thing up to 180 grit. So now I have the whole thing sanded to 180 grit and I taped off around the base because I want to apply some stain to just the base. I think originally, as far as I could tell, that was a darker contrasting color and almost completely opaque. So I'm gonna start by using some walnut gel stain on that part. And then I may need to add more stain later on or maybe use some toner lacquer, something like that to get it dark enough, but we'll see later on. So I'm gonna start with the stain. I think I'm not even going to wipe off the excess. I like it just how it looks. Just let that dry. And I'll very carefully put some in here. These surfaces were also originally dark. The 
the gel stain is now dry, and now it's time to apply some shellac over it. I'm just gonna spray some clear shellac. And I'm using the shellac for a few reasons. One, it will bring out the true color of the wood, so that'll help me to see if there's any kind of color work I need to do or uh, if I need to repair any divots or veneer chips, things like that. It'll pop out more with the shellac. Um, and then also it will begin to fill the grain a little bit. This is walnut veneer and it's got some deep open pores on it. So I'm probably gonna want to fill those at least um, a little bit. And I may use grain filler later for it, I'm not sure, but for now I'll start with the shellac. And it will also seal the wood a bit before I apply the final top coat, which is probably gonna be lacquer. And then I won't need to use as much lacquer. So the shellac has dried, and I've decided to go with some grain filler to fill the pores. And I'm just gonna use a water-based grain filler. This happens to be Timbermate, and it's in a walnut color. And it's good that I have the shellac on here because that will seal the wood so that the grain filler won't stain the wood because it does have color in it, but it will just stick in the pores. So if I didn't fill those pores, then, then you'd see all these little kind of like pits, little holes in the surface of the wood, uh, which can be okay. But in this case, uh, I've decided just to fill the pores and give it a smoother look which I think it probably would have had when it was new from the factory. And I'll just try to remove any excess before it dries. And any excess that's left after it dries, I'll just sand off. And I'll wipe it down with some naphtha to see how it's looking. It looks good. I don't want to wipe this with water because the, that'll pull out the filler because that's water-based. And I don't want to use alcohol because the shellac that's on here will come up with alcohol. So that's why I'm using naphtha. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so the filler has dried and I sanded it smooth and then I sprayed some more shellac over that. And now I wanted to try and fix this veneer chip. And I could use actual veneer to glue in here, but I think I'm gonna try instead melting some of these hard fill sticks in here. I find that sometimes that can actually make a more or a less noticeable repair than trying to match a piece of veneer this. So I just have to melt it in. And remove the excess. And this is obviously going to be too light. So I will put a different color in there. Try this one. Okay, and that's still a bit too light. I'll try a little bit of this one in there. I'll try some of this. I think I might leave it there for now and put some more shellac over this, probably do a little sanding, light sanding of the shellac before I put the lacquer on. And before I put the lacquer on, I'll put some little grain lines on here, little black dots 
to help it to blend in more and see how it looks. So while I was sanding the shellac coats, it became clear that the filler did not fill all of the grain of the wood. I can see that there are still some spots that need to be filled. And here it is right after I sanded the shellac with some 320 grit paper. And you can see all of the dull areas that are dull from the sandpaper, but you can also see a bunch of shiny little spots. And those are the pores of the wood that didn't get filled. So they're the low spots and the sandpaper didn't reach them. So I could just put another coat of filler over it. But one thing I noticed after I put on the first coat, I used a brown walnut colored filler and on these black inlays, you could see that brown filler in there. They really stuck out because it was so much lighter than the inlays. So I really need to do another coat, uh, but I don't want to put that brown filler on again. I probably should have just used black in the first place, but I think instead I'm gonna try something different and try to fill those pores with shellac. So basically I just spray more coats on and then sand it down a little bit and spray more coats to build up the shellac in the pores to fill them up. So let's say this is a cross section of the surface of the veneer, magnified many times. So you've got the surface and then the pores in the surface, little holes. And if I spray shellac on, it'll land on top and it'll go down into the hole and then top like that. It's not gonna bridge these pores unless maybe I sprayed a lot or really, really heavy coat, but I'm not doing that. So you'll still have these holes. So then once it dries, then I'll take a sanding block with some sandpaper and sand it down a little bit. But the sandpaper is not going down into the pore, so the shellac stays in there. It just glides over that hole. And then I can spray some more on. And now those holes are getting shallower. And then sand it down again. And then spray some more on. And then sand it down again. Not completely sand it down, just a little bit. So you can see now there's no more holes where the pores were because we kept spraying the shellac and let it build up in there, but sanded it down on the top. So bringing the high spots down and the low spots up, if that makes sense, hopefully. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna try on this one. And I'm not gonna go for a perfect surface. I'm not gonna try to completely fill all the pores, but just uh, a little bit so they're not quite as visible. Cause I'm probably gonna use a satin finish anyway in the end. And the satin finish won't show the pores as much as a gloss would because it doesn't reflect light like a gloss finish does. And that's generally when you see the pores is when the light reflects off of those little holes in the surface. Okay, I've got a few coats of shellac on here and the shellac is now dry. And it seems like a good time to put the decal on. This is a water slide decal, and it's been years since I've put one of these on, but uh, here we go. Just gonna drop it in the water for about five seconds. And then let it sit for about 15 seconds. Okay. See if this works. I think maybe I need to get it wetter. Let it sit again and try it again. There it goes.
Okay, now I have some measurements uh, from the original decal, so I know about where it goes. And it should be a little bit higher. It's about right. And now just try to get it gently pressed down and get the water out from underneath it. And pick up the excess water. No, oh, no. Almost ruined it there. Okay, so that's not a good idea. Let me make sure it's still in the correct spot. Okay, I think I should leave it as it is. That is good enough. Gotta let that dry now. Well, I'm finally ready to start spraying the final lacquer top coat. So I've got a few coats of lacquer on the top and now I'm trying to decide if I want to keep um, fine tuning the color of that veneer repair or just leave it as is. And this is the repair where I melted the hard fill stick into it. From this angle, I think it looks pretty good and it's right here if you can't see it. Uh, the challenge is that it's surrounded by real wood veneer. And this veneer, it's walnut and it's kind of fancy. It's got some nice figuring in it. And it changes depending on what angle you're looking at it from. The color of the wood changes depending on, you know, how the light's hitting it, um, what angle you're looking at it from. So from this angle, I think the color of the repair looks pretty good. It blends in pretty well. But let's see if I can turn the radio so the color of the veneer changes. And now it looks kind of dark. Now it looks darker than the surrounding wood. And the color of the repair didn't change. It's just the color of the surrounding wood that changed because I rotated it. The sunlight is hitting it from a different angle. So that's the challenge here. Let's see if I can move it back. And hopefully this is coming across in the camera. It's kind of hard to tell, but from that angle, I think it looks pretty good because now the cut this because now the surrounding wood looks darker. It's the same wood. It's just that the lights hitting it different. So the color changed. So you just kind of have to compromise, I think. And you might say, oh, well, maybe then you should put real wood veneer patch in there and then you wouldn't have this problem. But then you just have other things you have to deal with. Uh, like you'll have a seam going like that across the grain. So that's pretty challenging to hide. You know, you have to try to hide that seam that would pop out. And then also what if the wood that you choose for the veneer doesn't change color the same way this wood does. So I don't know. There are pros and cons each way. And I don't know. I think sometimes you just have to compromise and think that this might be good the way it is. I think I might just leave it. I don't want to start chasing my tail. So anyway, that's that. I'm going to let this lacquer dry and put a few more coats on. So I had a slight problem with the lacquer that I was spraying. This is what I was using, it's Def Semi-Gloss. And I know I said that I was gonna use satin earlier, I think I said that, but I couldn't find any. This is all I could find was a semi-gloss, so that's why I'm using this. Uh, but that's not the problem. The problem is that this was spitting. It wasn't spitting lacquer, really. It was more like 
little bits of some kind of solid stuff. I don't know what it was. And I've used DEF before for years. I've been using this with no problems. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on, but I tried three different cans from two different stores and they're all doing the same thing. So it just made the finish a little bit rough because it had these little bits of something in it. But I was able to save it. I just sanded it with some 400 grit paper to smooth it out. I didn't sand off all the lacquer, it just got rid of the rough stuff. But I decided I'm not gonna use this anymore. So the only thing I had on hand was this Mohawk clear gloss lacquer. And um, I wasn't planning on using gloss, but I figured this is the best that I have on hand. And if it's too glossy in the end, I can just kind of knock down the gloss with some steel wool, just buff it out a little bit. While the lacquer dries, I'm just gonna clean up these knobs with a little bit of this Flitz polish. That looks pretty good. It's not night and day, but this is definitely a little shinier than this. I don't wanna make it too shiny. I don't know if they were even that shiny when they were new, so. I think that'll do. I think that's one thing to keep in mind when restoring things like this, mass produced pieces, is that they probably were never perfect. Well, I'm sure they were never perfect. I've come across plenty of furniture that has factory defects in it. So I think oftentimes people restore things to even nicer condition than they would have been when they were brand new. There's nothing wrong with that, but uh, just something to keep in mind so you don't get hung up by uh, chasing perfection. So I'm just gonna get this to where I like it and leave it at that. Okay, I think it's finally time to get it all put back together. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.